Hello everyone, my name is Otavio and this is the Galilean Library. And today I'm here with a batch review of all of the seven nominated short stories for the Nebula Awards. And just as a disclaimer first, um, this is going to be a spoiler-free review of all of the seven short stories. I'll be discussing their themes and what I like and don't like about them in general terms, but I will not be spoiling any of them. So if you have read those stories and want to discuss them more at depth, Please feel free to leave down a comment and I'll be glad to discuss those stories with you. Just make sure to point out that there will be spoilers in your comments so that you don't accidentally spoil anyone. Also make sure to check the description box below. I have a link of all of my reviews for each of the stories as well as a link to read those stories for free on the internet. I'm also going to post links to the audio versions for the ones that do have them. I know that at least one does, so uh, feel free to check that. They are really great stories, even the ones that I didn't like so much, and you should check those out. So I will start with my least favorite, and I will end with my favorite short story of all of them. And with that out of the way, let's get started. The first short story I'm going to be discussing, and my least favorite, is A Stretch of Highway Two Lanes Wide by Sarah Pinsker. And I gave this one two out of five stars, and I ultimately thought it was a bit pointless. So basically the story follows a guy as he loses his arm and is replaced by a bionic arm, like a, a, a robotic arm. And he's one of the first people in the world to have that implant and it's an implant connected to the brain so it's easier to control and you can actually control it as if it was your real hand. And the premise of this story is that the arm thinks it's a highway and it yes it's really really weird and I'm not gonna say any more just that but I ultimately thought it was really pointless and, and I thought that maybe I was missing some sort of metaphor but no yeah the story was just strangely silly and pointless I didn't like it I gave it two stars as I said so yeah I would still recommend you to read it it's interesting and different but just not for me I guess the next short story is The Vaporization Enthropy of a Peculiar Pakistani Family by Usman T. Malik. And I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was really interesting, but I think I was just completely confused throughout the whole thing. And basically it follows a Pakistani family, obviously, and it deals with very relevant things today, such as terrorism and loss and how to deal with death and how to deal with her family being separated or driven apart. And it was interesting, it had a great ending, but I ultimately felt it was um, confusing throughout. Like it had way over my head rhetoric and I feel like I missed a lot. It's very detailed but very convoluted, I think. And ultimately that did not do it justice. I still enjoyed it, as I said, the thematic is very relevant today, so I would recommend it definitely. Maybe you will like it more than I did and I'm planning on rereading sometime in the future. I think I would get more out of it. The next story is The Breath of War by Aliette de Baudat, and this one I really, really enjoyed. I also gave it 3.5 stars, and it basically follows a woman about to give birth in this planet where people have the ability to breathe life into stone. And basically it deals with motherhood and creation and um, how, uh, how sometimes people long for things beyond their capabilities or beyond what's given to them or what's available. And it was a really, really enchanting story. The only problem, I think, was that it wasn't gripping enough and the pace was a little bit off for me. So, and maybe if the character development extended beyond just the main character, I would have liked it more. So, yeah. I still really enjoy the writing style and I intend to read more stuff by Eliade de Baudat. I haven't read anything by her yet. This is the first thing. I'm really, really interested in her style and the stories she tells. The next story is When It Ends, He Catches Her by Yuji Foster. And this is the first one that I really enjoyed. And um, I'm not going to say anything about the plot because that would be a spoiler. Um, but I will give you the setting. So basically, the story opens with this dancer on a stage performing. And there is no crew, there is nobody helping her, nobody on stage with her, and no audience. And the theater is very, very dilapidated. It deals with uh, passion and how the things we're passionate about really serve as a beacon for us and for our abilities, for our minds, for our memories and all of that. So really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. 
Next one is Jackalope Wives by Ursula Vernon. And this story reminded me so much of Neil Gaiman. It was really great. It was confusing in the beginning, and that's why I didn't give it five stars, because it was phenomenal. But I really got that feeling from like a Gaiman-esque story, and how it deals with folklore, womanhood, and um, just like really, really strong characters. It also reminded me a little bit of Pretty Deadly Volume 1, but not as convoluted as that one. Just a little bit, I guess. Um, so really, really good stories, fantastic ending, fantastic characters. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Now the last two were my two favorite stories. Um, I'm still a bit on the edge on which one I prefer, but I enjoyed those two so much. They're like really, really good, almost perfect in my eyes. First one is The Fisher Queen by Alyssa Wong. And this story is a dark twist on the Little Mermaid or just the mermaid tale. It's so dark and it's so terrifying and terrible and horrific. And I loved it so much and uh, has really really well established characters even the side characters are well established and it deals with really really deep and terrific things and um, oh my god it was absolutely phenomenal yeah five out of five stars you gotta read this one and the other one that I loved so much was The Meeker and the All-Seeing Eye by Matthew Crissell and this story follows the Meeker, a tentacled alien that pilots a live ship called the Bulb, and the nearly omniscient creature called the All-Seeing Eye, that's also on this ship and is a companion of the Meeker, traveling across the galaxies and harvesting dead stars and knowledge. This was a fantastic story, and I didn't expect it to be so sweet as well. It has some themes of relationships and memory that is really really riveting. It was also of epic proportions. This was a great story and fantastic science fiction tale. I loved it beyond belief. I also gave it 5 out of 5 stars. And that's it for today guys. I hope you liked this video and enjoyed the reviews and as I said if you want to discuss those stories more in depth please feel free to leave a comment down below and if you want to see more click subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!